With pro days in the book, let the waiting begin for prospect NFL rookies to hear their names called. Hello everyone and welcome back to Penn State Sports Night. I'm Olivia Corman alongside Juan Mendez and Carlos Garcia. Where do you each have some of the top college players going this fall? Well, in order to make a bracket, you need to come to the point that you just have to sell whatever you make. Here, uh, same as with the draft here like we have. So what I have is the obvious Aiden Hutchinson, Trevon Walker. That's the main two that we're talking about here. For me, Kevon Thibodeau dropped a little bit. A lot of people have him going outside the top 10. I have him there at fourth for the Jets. The Jets that have a formidable draft here, according to what I put, because they get Sauce Gardner as well. Uh, now, a lot of people also have him going many different places, but this is all around the uncertainty of also the quarterbacks. Who is going to make that shot first? And I have Carolina picking Kenny Pickett here, spicing things up and making a lot of teams think about it. Like, is it time to, for me to take a quarterback here? What should I do? Malik Willis, the uncertainty around him, I'll talk about it a little bit later, but the Seahawks can make a move. A lot of people can make a move. But then let's move on a little bit, and we have the Vikings. The appropriate player for the Vikings is a tall corner. That's what they need, the physicality. Make a lot of replacements there. Pair him up with Patrick Peterson on the other side. And the ideal is Ahmad Gardner, but he's going to be taken. So I got Derek Stingley Jr. also there. Great positioning. Jermaine Johnson there on the Baltimore Ravens. A lot of good picks here. And now the spiciest one, when that happened actually very recently, is what the Saints have done, traded with the Eagles. And what they did, get the position at number 16. And you only do this move if you take a quarterback or just a big, big name. And I have them taking Matt Corral, a very interesting quarterback, very dynamic. That is the word that I'm going to choose for him. And I have them choosing Matt Corral. Now, moving on to the next side of this draft, I have the most interesting thing here is the wide receivers. I have two teams taking two wide receivers in the first round. And that is going to be Garrett Wilson for the Eagles. And along with the Eagles, I have them making a big move for a name I'm going to talk about later as well. And the other team is going to be the Packers, who a lot of stuff happened this offseason, you could say. So I have them choosing Traylon Burks for the good size, exactly what they need, a good replacement for Devontae Adams. And Chris Olave for the speed, a good shift of both, a good balance, and two options they don't have to trade for, but they just will land there for them. That is what I am expecting. So that's what I have to say about the draft overall. Very interesting, a lot of things to expect, and a lot of names that could go anywhere. Yeah, definitely, Juan. I have to agree with you. I think especially with Kayvon Thibodeau, I think his stock is definitely rising and dropping. People really don't know where he's going to land. But looking at my side and the first half of the bracket, I'm going to skip the top three a little bit just because I have a big shakeup that I'm going to talk about later. But moving on, I have Trayvon Walker at four going to the Jets. I don't know where the hype around Trayvon Walker is coming from. A lot of people have him as a top two pick. I don't see where that's coming from, but great athlete overall. Moving on, just like you, I have Carolina taking the first quarterback off the board. I have a couple QBs coming off in the first round. But I think Kenny Pickett is a right fit for Carolina. There's a couple people in the front office from Pittsburgh who really like Pickett. So I think he's a good match there. Kind of will back up Sam Darnold and potentially take over, depending on how Carolina does in the regular season. And then the second QB I have is two picks later, Malik Willis. After Matt Ryan got traded to Indianapolis, Marcus Mariota, not sure where the certainty is there. But I think Malik Willis, he brings his physicality and the athleticism he has. I think he's a lot of raw talent. So backing up Mariota for a couple games, maybe even the whole season and seeing where that is. Because Marcus Mariota signed a two-year deal, but technically that's a one-year. It's like a player option after the first year. So Marcus Mariota could be out of the ATL next year. So we'll see where Malik Willis goes with that. Moving on, the first wide receiver I have off the board, Drake London. We saw that. The Washington Commanders picked up Carson Wentz in the offseason, and I think that Wentz had success like last year with Michael Pittman. I think Drake London is definitely a little bit of the same mold as Pittman, a big physical wide receiver that will definitely help out the much-needed weapon that Carson Wentz needs. And then our, I have also Chris Olave going to the Saints. We saw that the Saints and the Eagles, they traded today. I'm not sure if the Saints are going to take a quarterback because Jameis Winston was, he did pretty well before his injury, but definitely that's something to watch out for. Now moving on into the second half, of this first round here. A lot of couple, you kind of start to see the talent drop a little bit, or not drop, but definitely the big names are in the first half, but definitely still a ton of great talent here. I mean, I'm looking at 20, 20th overall, Tyler Linderbaum from Iowa, one of the better O-line prospects in this draft. I think he'll be a great fit there. As you mentioned before, Devontae Adams out of Green Bay. So I'll have him taking a couple wide receivers, Traylon Burks from Arkansas, and then Penn State's very own Jahan Dotson. Great hands there. And then just kind of wrapping up here, N'Kobe Dean out of Georgia, he's a great, he's a captain of that Georgia offense at the linebacker position, position. So I think definitely the Jaguars will benefit from somebody like him. You both said it perfectly. Quarterbacks could go early. You both have it, but who knows? 
With this class being so talented, wh which players do you think could add a, has a home already, a perfect fit for them? Well, the player that definitely stands out when I think of perfect fit is Kyle Hamilton. He's one of the best defensive back prospects in this draft, if not the best. I mean, the physicality that he has. I mean, people were saying that he's slow for a safety because he recorded a 4-5-40 in, in the combine and then a 4-7 in his pro day. But the one play that stood out to me in the, in the regular season of college football was when Notre Dame played FSU and Kyle Hamilton covered the width of a field in one pass and he was able to break that up before uh, FSU's quarterback was able to complete about a 40, 50 yard pass. So Kyle Hamilton, he's just a freak, an athlete overall. And the home I see for him is the New York Giants. They're really lacking in that secondary position. James Bradbury, hell of a cornerback, Adoree Jackson, pretty good as well, but especially in that safety position. New York is a team where the Giants, you can throw a man with a cover two on top. Kyle Hamilton can basically cover half the field if he wants to. So I think that in terms of perfect fit and which player already has a home, it's got to be Cal Hamilton, the safety out of Notre Dame. And backing off of that, that is exactly why I also have him going to the Giants pretty early in the top 10. Now my pick for a guy that's very fitting for the system, it actually fits really well because he doesn't fit at all. And that is a good thing. And that is Malik Willis, who you talked about a little bit. They had Matt Ryan for so many years, but then this team, it's embracing a new system. It's embracing something new. And that is the versatility that they have. Cordero Patterson, they have there just so many weapons that they could put anywhere. Calvin Ridley, a lot of people are expecting them to have a, a new wide receiver to replace him to take that role. But I feel like the star is a quarterback that can do it all, basically. Like you said, the physicality, just somebody that can compete with Mariota. That's a big thing, too. Compete and get the best out of each other. And because a lot of people want him, too. So the value that he has is huge. And like I said, after Pickett is picked, I feel like people are going to look in Willis, at Willis and the Falcons will not pass on the opportunity to have him because of that versatility and to just bring back the Michael Vick days maybe of the Atlanta Falcons. Who knows what's going to happen with that? But that's who I think is going to be a really good fit just because it's a big shift and it might be very favorable for the Falcons. You're definitely right. He does not fit like perfectly, but maybe that's a good thing in this case. Every year we see plans changing weeks before like the Eagles Saints day today or even days or the day of the draft. What do you guys see happening? Do you see, or big trades or big draft picks that could really shake things up? Well, two things that I'll cover. I think I'm not really a huge, I'm not a big part of the hype around Trevon Walker, but I did put him at second because he's a veteran. He's a veteran, and that's the difference with Thibodeau. A lot of people said Thibodeau is just power moves. That's all he can bring to the table. That is the thing about Walker. He is very versatile in rushing, and I do see that as a big advantage and him as a leader of the D-line, something that the Lions definitely need. And the only trade that I really have that I could be slightly confident in because the rest is very unexpected, it's going to be none other than Jahan Dotson. The Eagles, I have them trading up for the second Kansas City pick. They're going to trade for that pick and they're going to take Jahan Dotson to take their second receiver in the first round. Now, it's a big move, but it is a PA guy. I feel like they're going to realize that he's still on the table and they're not going to do the same thing they did a few years ago, skipping on CeeDee Lamb. They're going to say, I want this guy. This guy can do a lot for us. And we don't just want one receiver. We want to prove that we could do a lot in this draft. We could really make a point, make a statement. And Jahan Dodson is the perfect way to do it. And th him being the second receiver you draft here, it's more than perfect. Yeah, Jahan Dodson, he has those great hands. So I think he'll be, definitely be beneficial for Philly or wherever he goes. But the reason I skipped over the top three in my portion of the mock draft was because I have the... The Detroit Lions and the Jacksonville Jaguars making a pick, so they're gonna swap the first. They're gonna swap the first and the second overall pick here. And Aiden Hutchinson, you know, he's the safe pick. He's the best player in this draft. I think whatever team drafts him is gonna have a legend in their in their organization for years to come. But I think that after the season that Detroit had last year, which is kind of a shocker, you know, they had a couple wins and people expected them to go 0 and 17. But Detroit's unfortunately for them, they're not in a position where they can win now. But if there's one thing that benefits them from being the worst team in the league, or one of the worst teams, is draft capital. And if you're not going to use it, you might as well trade it. Try, try and get a way to move up in the draft and get a, player, a better player. Kayvon Thibodeau, my only issue with him, with him is that there's been reports of him at Oregon. He doesn't really have the, not the talent, but the will to go out every day and really practice. He doesn't have that energy, that drive, as other players do. Aiden Hutchinson, I think if Detroit has an opportunity to make a move, they need to, and they need to secure him. Kayvon Thibodeau, don't get me wrong, he's a freak. I would want to have him if I was an owner of an NFL team. But I think the better move for Detroit, get your guy that stays home in Michigan. You know, Aiden Hutchinson, like I said, best player. He's the safest pick. And if you're Jacksonville, you have somebody like N'Kobe Dean 
in the last pick of the first round. That's a, a field general, a middle linebacker there that can really help solidify kind of that one-two punch there with Thibodeau and Dean. So I think that definitely Detroit and Jacksonville, I think that's a trade that might happen in the first round. And then, of course, the Eagles and the Saints trading today. We'll see if the Saints take a quarterback. That might be a little iffy, but like we said before, Jameis Winston had a pretty good year before injury, so we'll see where that leads. Juana, you have Dotson going to Philadelphia. I think really he would help Jalen Hurts out and the rest of the Eagles offense. Well, that's all the time we have. Stay tuned for more mock draft specials. L leading up to the NFL draft, for H Juan Mendez and Carlos Garcia, I'm Olivia Corman. Thanks for watching and have a great night. Hey, everybody. Thank you for tuning into this edition of Penn State Sports Night. We hope you liked that segment. And we're sure there's other Penn State Sports Night segments that you are going to love as well. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content. And check us out on social media for updates and behind the scenes clips and pics. Follow us on Twitter at PSSNTV and on Instagram at PSU Sports Night to keep up with all the action. For all of us here at the Belisari Media Center, we are Penn State Sports Night.